another gorgeous day on planet earth and another day of dose of did you know where intriguing inspiring unique individuals come to talk about love and life and how it has brought them to where they are today i am your host danny rocco and with me is mr dave rogers how are you i'm doing great today I love great. Everybody should just be great. Like, even if you're having a crappy day, I think you need to be like, I'm fantastic. Cause that's just going to like, how do you like have a crappy day when you're like, I'm fantastic. I'm great. I don't think you can. I don't think it works that way. Um, yeah. You know, every day that you're, that you're awake and every day that you're out there doing what you love, whether it's a struggle or not is a great day. Yeah. You know, and uh, okay, but before we get started, because I'm about to like, I'm about to go on a tangent here, and we need to let everybody know who Dave Rogers is. So tell the world a little bit about who you are. Uh, so I grew up in New York City. I left home at 15 and uh, lived on the streets, put myself through high school, got into college. And when I ran out of money, I joined the Army uh, in 1989, uh, traveled around, saw a few things. Um, and then after my service with some struggles that was going on, uh, I found the VFW or like, I like to say the VFW found me mm -hmm. and I continue to serve veterans and the community through the VFW, uh, mm. here in Patchogue. Okay. So I love how you're like, when you ran out of money, normally somebody at 15 would have ran out of money at 16. I mean, it wouldn't have been years later, college and ha, let me do this. So there had to be something inside you uh, that maybe you didn't know at the time, but was bigger and greater than you yourself. Um, yeah. I mean, growing up, I grew up in New York city. So anybody who knows New York city knows that, we didn't have dreams of becoming a soldier. I grew yeah. up, we had dreams of becoming a police officer like my father or a firefighter, uh, like one of my cousins. Uh, I mean, that was our dream growing up. Mm -hmm. So joining the military was nowhere near um, my vision for my future. And in fact, I first joined the reserves. I was like, all right, I'm going to do one week in a month, two weeks a year. And then I got to active duty. I'm like, I can do this. This is nothing. This this is simple. A bunch of people yell at you and you just go, yes, sir. And you move on. And you do your thing. Like, how hard is that? <laughs> you sound like my son. Because when he came out, when we were, you know, I was that mom. Yeah, I went to like everything that I was allowed to go to, bought every single thing. And he's like, I, even his, a shirt with his face on. And he was like, if you wear that in public, oh, my God. Like, I'm going to disown you. I'm like, mm, you might want to disown me. But he said, did say to me, he's like, ma, I don't know. Those, those drill instructors had nothing on you. And I'm like, hmm, compliment or not? Not quite sure about that. But he has the same point of view. He's like, ah, just yell at me. Keep going. I got this. Yeah, it, it was, um, the military actually was great for me. Um, and it wasn't just about the discipline. It was about I got to travel the world and see things that normal people don't get to see. Yeah. Um, but my biggest thing was, so a lot of my friends, especially as I got older, a lot of my friends like to go camping and they like to go skydiving and they like to shoot weapons and go to the rifle range and they're paying money for this. And I was like, the military's paying me to do this. <laughs> like, I'm not paying for this. I'm not paying to do this stuff. They're paying me. Like, what better life is there? than being paid to do all the crazy things that people like to do in the world. <laughs> that is one way to look at it. Probably why you are so sex, sex, sex I was gonna say sexy, that's not what I was gonna say. Successful <laughs> in your I career. <laughs> you know, whatever. And whatever truth comes out of my mouth all the time, who knows? Who knows where this is gonna go. But so you, you get out and the VFW finds you. Like, tell me about that experience. Because we were talking before we went on about, you know, the importance of the VFW that most people don't really think of the actual importance of it. So to paint that picture for me, how you plopped into that world. So 
when I got out, I knew nothing about the VFW or the American Legion or any of the other veteran groups out there in the world. Um, I was struggling like a lot of young soldiers struggle when they get out. Uh, I had broken my neck and I was pushed out on a medical. One day I'm in the army. The next day I'm sitting at home and they're just telling me, go to the VA. I don't know what that means. Go to the VA. What, what is that? Um, so I'm up at the VA. I'm going there every day. And I'm screaming and yelling at people about, I need my benefits. I need my assistance. I, 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 I need to know where to go next. Um, and I'm just angry. You know, I'm, I'm angry at the world because I was told, you know, you, you go and you serve your country and everything's going to be fine. And the truth is, it's not that simple. No. Um, so one day I'm at the, the VA and I'm yelling at this woman behind the counter. And it's not her fault. You know, she's just following the rules. And a gentleman in a VFW shirt grabs me and he goes, no, no, we don't do that this way. And he takes me down to veteran services. He sits me down with a counselor. They talk about what my benefits could be. They talk about how they can help me. Um, they discuss, you know, where, where I'm going to go step by step. And the funny thing is the whole time that he's with me, he's not asking me if I'm a combat veteran. He's not asking me if I'm eligible to join the VFW. He's not throwing an application in my face. He's simply there to make sure that I'm being taken care of. And so that intrigued me. I'm like, okay, maybe there's something to this VFW. Maybe it's not that, you know, bunch of old men sitting around drinking and smoking. Um, and don't get me wrong. We have our nights where we sit around and we chat and we, you know, we, ha we throw back a few and there's that camaraderie of the members, um, which is also important because they understand you. Uh, but it's so much bigger than that. And so organizations like the VFW, one of the great things we get to do is we get to testify before Congress. Mm -hmm. We get to talk about legislation that is important um, to us because you're talking about an organization, first of all, it's the oldest um, combat veteran organization. It's the largest combat veteran organization in the United States. Um, 1.2 million members represented by the VFW. And that gives us the ability to sit before Congress and say, you need to take care of this. And people need to understand that without the VFW and the American Legion, there would be no GI Bill. There would be no VA hospital. There would be no benefits. None of this stuff would exist. These organizations fought for that and they continue to fight for it every single day. Yeah, that is stuff I had no idea. No idea like there was that level of what the VFW and the American Legion does for our country. I just thought it was all government stuff that they just kind of put together and God knows who fights for, you know, fights for the veterans. I had no idea. I was clueless. And I think majority of us are clueless and majority of, you know, soldiers that once they're done being active duty are clueless. It's not, it's nothing that you're educated on. Well, and it goes beyond that. So that's at the national and state level, this fighting for legislation. Um, but at the local levels, you know, depending on the situation and, and what's going on, um, VFWs and American legions and vets, all these veteran service groups, uh, they have programs in which they take care of in the communities to take care mm -hmm. of their local veterans based on the need. Um, so, you know, some posts will be very involved uh, with scouts and other posts will be very involved with youth programs and veterans in the classrooms. I mean, we all do a little bit of that. Um, but then we find other needs uh, that are going on in the community. And there are posts that there's a post that every year, um, a post in Queens every year, they collect money to buy trees for troops overseas. And they send like, I think like 20,000 decorated Christmas trees to Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, wherever the, wherever the troops are yeah. that they need Christmas trees. Um, you know, we do, we do handouts of turkeys during Thanksgiving and Christmas to veterans in need. We do coat drives. Um, you know, we're a grassroots organization. And so whatever the need is, right. Um, that's where we fill in. And then I want to, I want you to talk about, because this again, didn't realize this, I mean, I realize it now, but not before is 
when you don't go to the VFW or you don't go to the American Legion or you don't go to the VA just because you just don't want to deal with it or for whatever reason, I, I mean, make up whatever reason why you don't do it. You're not giving the knowledge to like the VFW or the VA to go to Congress and say, there's this many people that are dealing with X, Y, Z. So it's really something bigger than just yourself and your own need. When you go to heal yourself, you're actually giving, you know, statistics for you to use to right. change. You know, I, I was saying earlier, you know, only about 32 to 36 percent of veterans today use the VA hospital. And that's a sad number because there are so many veterans out there and they'll say, oh, I don't trust in the VA. They, you know, they read the media, whatever else like mm -hmm. that. But actually, there are a lot of great doctors at the VA. Um, but also, it's about being counted for. Even if you don't, let's say you have private insurance and you don't want to use the VA, that's fine. You should still register. You should still file, um, especially if you served overseas, you should still file for your claim because it's not a gift. You earn that. You earn those benefits, those rights. But you also are letting the VA know and you're letting the government know how many veterans are struggling with things like, you know, lung conditions from burn pits, traumatic mm -hmm. brain injury, or what we call TBI. Um, and it's not just being hit in the head. There's a chemical version of TBI that mimics PTSD. Um, so you might be struggling with PTSD side effects, but you might have TBI. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's so many unknowns in the world. And there's so much research being done. And those numbers is what helps, you know, researchers, the government, the VA, understand where their needs are. I was, I was saying earlier that um, a lot of Vietnam veterans that came back, you know, they were treated poorly, they were treated bad. And quite a few of them did not use the VA. And because of that, because the numbers were down um, in the research, it took a long time to fight for more benefits for things that were related to Agent Orange. Um, same thing now, we're, we're just now, uh, in the last couple of years, starting to realize the effects of liver fluke, which is a, a little parasite that lives in your liver and can cause cancer. Um, and this could affect hundreds of thousands of veterans who have no idea because you don't know until it becomes cancer that you have this. So it's very important that mm -hmm. veterans, if nothing else, even if you have no plans to use the VA, um, that you register with the VA. And it's very important that you join service organizations like the VFW and the American Legion um, so that those organizations can continue to speak and fight for you and your benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm sure, I, I mean, I know every, just like every VFW is different, every VA is different. Like we talk about any, any place. I mean, you name it, any restaurant is different, even if it's a chain restaurant, right? The, uh, depending on the people and stuff, but I've had great experiences as, as a mom and as part of the auxiliary, great experiences there. Um, it's not just like, music concerts and bow shooting and things like that. So I, I got to just throw that out there that it's kind of be fun. I mean, auxiliary is important. Let me tell you, um, if you're a family member of a, of a veteran or even a soldier who right now is deployed overseas or even an active soldier who's been deployed overseas, you have the ability to join the auxiliary. And the great thing about that is you're supporting the veterans. But also, let's say your child is deployed or your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, whatever, is deployed. Um, we send care packages. You know, we, we make sure that they're getting the support and help that they need when they come back. Um, yeah. So I encourage we have a great auxiliary here at our post um, and they're growing stronger all the time. They're very active. We appreciate everything that they do um, for us and with us. You know, it's amazing. Well, I think sometimes as family members, we feel like we can't do anything, you know, we're, we're, we're there. But so that's one of the things I love, like everything you just said, it's kind of like you putting your, 
as a family member, putting your money where your mouth is might not seem like a lot, but every little bit I feel is, you know, leading with love, right? And that is what we have to do to heal ourselves and the world and, and just be happy. Right. Um, and, you know, and so on that effect, you know, um, like I said, VFWs, they're, each one is unique. They have their own little programs that they do. Um, for us, um, we look at the insecurities within the community, housing insecurities, food insecurities, transportation, internet. I mean, I hate using that word insecurities, but it's, it's uh, you know, for lack of a better word, it's yeah. what we're talking about. Um, there are so many veterans in need. And we discovered during um, COVID crisis, because a lot of soup kitchens were closed and because a lot of the big food pantries weren't cooking hot meals. They were still mm -hmm. delivering food. Um, so we had homebound veterans who were on a waiting list to get hot meals. Um, not wow. their fault. You know, it, it right. happens. Um, so we started a program called Cooking with a Veteran, uh, which is my little uh, project. And I love the, the program. Um, yeah. I cook live on Facebook. I share my recipes some of my stories. Yeah, don't watch if you're hungry. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, and I'm so glad you just kind of segued into this because that is Ryan sent me one of the videos. I'm like, who is this? And oh my gosh. And then Andrew was telling me there's something out there, lobster mac and cheese that you do. Like what? I did. My last episode was lobster mac and cheese. Um, I love cooking. I forgot how much I love cooking. I actually stopped cooking for a long time um, because of my depression and everything else like that. Yeah. But cooking is a great uh, avenue for me to work through some of my uh, issues. Um, so I love cooking. I made uh, lobster mac and cheese was my last episode. I've made um, Sichuan chicken with mango. Um, I've made Spanish rice. I mean, I'm on, I think I'm on like, 56 episodes so far. Um, I have a lot of catch up on YouTube to do, but they're on Facebook. Every week I go on Facebook and I cook live um, to share my recipes. And the food that I'm cooking is actually for veteran friends of mine, um, you know, or even just friends of mine who I feel can use a really nice home meal. Yeah. Uh, everybody could use a really nice home cooked meal. That is the truth. Are these recipes like written down or are you like just a little pinch of this and a little bit of that? So we'll never get it the right way that, uh, but we'll get close, but we'll See, never have the good Rogers. Um, I do. When, when I do the shows, I do talk about how much, um, not so much with seasoning. You know, I always tell people that seasoning is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some people don't like as much seasoning. Some people like more seasoning. Um, but I tell them what I put in at least, you know, to let them know. Uh, this is me. I love spicy food. So, and I tell people, if you don't like spice, don't add the spice. Yeah. But I love spice and I love cooking with uh, lots of bourbons, wine, beer. Um, nothing better than, you know, a nice bourbon to go along with your meal. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, this this is the joy for me sharing this um, with people, um, and you know, I do try to put the recipe. Like I said, I'm way behind on my YouTube video editing. <laughs> um, I do try to put the recipes on YouTube and put the uh, recipes in there. But I've had people reach out to me and ask me personally for the recipe, and I'll send it to them. Yeah, uh, I love sharing it, and I'm all about fresh. Fresh herbs and spices, mm. uh, not not that stored bought dry stuff. I love things that are fresh. Where do you find it in New York? Uh, there are a lot. We have farmers markets. We have there's a few supermarkets locally that have some great produce. Um, so I love going to those. But yeah, we have far I have a farmers market locally uh, that they'll let me know when they have some nice stuff that I might enjoy adding to my recipes. And so I'll go out to them and I'll get some of the stuff and I'll add into my recipes. 
I love it. Well, you have a lot going on. I mean, you've got there's an there's an election coming up here shortly that I mean, we're not going to make any announcements because like you said, you never know till after it. But I can't imagine that um, there, there's not going to be good news coming from the election. Well, and I do a lot. And people ask me, they say, how do you do so much? And I tell them, here's my my secret, my trick. You ready for this? Yes. I don't own a television. I don't watch TV, so I have more time on my hands to do everything that I do because I don't own a television. The secret yeah. sauce, don't watch TV. <laughs> that is the secret sauce because even like five minutes here, ten minutes there, add that up. Right. Man, that's it. Okay. Challenge out there. Everybody get rid of your TVs. Put them in the put them in the garage, the closet, whatever, and see how much more productive you are in three months. There you go. I think, this, challenge. Get rid of your I think this is a great challenge. I will do it too, because I gotta put my money where my mouth is, right? So, and that includes Netflix on T on your phone, because oh, that's my that's my that gets me. Don't get me wrong, I love to watch a good movie. I do. Um, but I don't have time to follow episode after episode yeah. of a show that, you know, um, that's going on. Yeah. So. Well, that is the secret sauce. You are a strong man. I don't know if I can do it, but I can at least give it a good, good try. Yeah. Um, <laughs> check out his Facebook page so you can get good, get all caught up. Actually, there you go. Get all caught up on your episodes of the cooking, um, of your cooking show. Cause that's what I'm going to just call it. Cause that's, cooking with a veteran. that's what I call it. Cooking with a veteran. Cooking with a veteran. I love it. I love it. I love it. So Dave, before I let you go, so you can continue on doing all of these amazing things that you've got going on over there in New York. I ask you that you answer this last question with the first thing that comes to your mind. You don't have to explain it. You can just say it and be done with it. In this moment right now, what does love mean to you? Love to me means friendship. Uh, there's no more pure love in the world um, than a pure friend, you know? And sometimes we don't realize how many great friends we have in the world um, until we get to our time in need. So to me, that's, that's what love is. Mm. And, you know, I really think you are living in that of being a good friend, right? Even for people that might not know you, you know. I'm um, a terrible friend. Nobody yeah. else. <laughs> lies, lies. I don't think I would have been introduced to you if you were a terrible friend. But thank you for living in your truth every day and doing what you have done your whole life and giving us some little secrets of how to be so... Um, Kind of, it was actually like purposeful and then have time to be purposeful, you know? So thank you for all of that. And to everybody else out there, remember as always, love hard, love pure, and love proactive. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.